Hey guys, here's our new home. In case you don't know who I am, I'm Christine and I am so excited about this. So we just picked up this Catalina RV uh, almost a week ago, it'll be a week ago on Saturday. And I know a good handful of you have wanted to see a tour of it. So I'm gonna give that to you today. So the thing that first caught our eye was named Catalina. Uh, my husband and I have been married for 14 years now, and for our 10th anniversary, we went to Catalina Island off the coast of California. So when I saw the name Catalina, I was already excited about it. Then when I saw the bunk room, I was even more excited. So I'm gonna show you guys all of the inside and why we love it so much and why we think it's gonna be a really great setup for us, how we plan on having a homeschool space in it and everything else. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit first about um, just our full-time journey. So we are still in our house, my house in the background. Uh, it goes up on the market in two days. We're very excited about it. Um, so this was something that we want to do. My husband's in the military and he's retiring in three and a half-ish years. And so we have been planning for a handful of years now to go on the road when he retires. And having a camper, is obviously going to help us with that. We had a camper we traded in for this. We had a 23 foot Heartland um, and it obviously was a little bit on the smaller side. So this isn't huge, this is about 30 feet. Um, so it is not what you typically see people full-timing in, especially when you have three kids and two dogs. You're usually seeing people in more of a 35 to 45 foot. <laughs> so we are on the smaller side here, but the reason why is because we love our national park adventures. We love to be able to camp at places like our national parks and a good handful of them only allow for 30 feet or less. So when we were shopping for an RV, we wanted to make sure that we could still get those accommodations in a lot of the state parks and national parks and whatnot and have some of the options for having a smaller spot in those places. So we said, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna get this 30 foot and we're gonna make it work and we're gonna make sure that all of us can live in it comfortably. Um, so it is, a, um, it's a Catalina 293 QBCK. I know it's probably backwards for you guys, but that way if you wanted to look at the layout a little bit easier online, you could um, for those of you that care about it. So first cool thing about this, it's got the nice handle and it's got the really nice stairs. We had to basically like climb up, especially in some uneven spots in our last camper, we had to basically climb up our little rinky dink stairs. So this having the bigger stairs was a big plus for us. We really liked that. So come on in, welcome to our home. So this is new, it's a 2019, and that's not something that we were expecting to do. We wanted to get something probably at least a couple of years old, just for the price point mainly. Um, but the colors in this and having everything be very light was kind of what got us, um, and also the bunk room, like I said, that was pretty much like number one for us. So this does have an outdoor kitchen, which I didn't show you, but you can see the little opening over there. So that is for, can you see that over there? There you at the very end, so there's an outdoor kitchen, very basic, has a little tiny uh, refrigerator, has a little tiny sink, and has a little grill. Um, we'll probably end up using that more for storage, especially for things like our Instant Pot and whatnot that we don't think we can fit inside, but we'll see what happens. So that's the biggest thing with this is compared, oh gosh, the lighting, okay, there we go. Compared to our old camper was much, much smaller. It had really great storage for how small it was. Um, I guess that the Heartland uh, North Country is a very nice camper for how small it is. So it did have some things that my husband likes to point out as the nicer toilet. We already replaced a toilet in this because he wanted the nice real toilet, the porcelain toilet, not a plastic toilet. Um, it had really huge cabinets uh, where this one does have some really good storage and I'm gonna show that to you guys in just a second. Um, but it doesn't have quite the same storage, especially in the bathroom, especially in the kitchen. Um, some parts of it were lacking storage here compared to our much smaller rig. Um, so as we go through, you'll see that we don't have hardly anything set up yet because we've been trying to focus a little bit more on getting our house ready to get listed and everything. Um, but you'll kind of see where we're a little bit up in the air with our storage. So if you guys have any ideas, especially you that are already full timing as far as finding stuff that will actually fit in the cabinets. Cause that was the thing is we had all of this stuff in our old rig and none of it fits <laughs> in this rig of course, cause it always works that way. Um, so just what are your storage hacks? 
for those of you who have campers and camp on weekends or those of you who are already full timing because like we have all of the storage under the sink here and like how do you make it work to actually fit your stuff um, same with when you first walk in the door there's a really nice cabinet right here all we have in there right now is our Berkey, which will be going up on our counter. But how do you make your stuff work? Um, the only thing we can think of is honestly making custom shelving with wood, like lightweight, you know, um, plexi board, whatever. Um, so how do you guys make that work as far as buying stuff to put in? Because we're trying to minimize the DIY stuff because that's a big reason um, why we're wanting to full time in a way is because my husband is an amazing woodworker and a lot of his home time goes towards woodworking and doing DIY stuff. And we're like, holy crap, we don't have time as a family anymore doing all of this. So if there's something that, of course, we're not made of money, something that is a good, cheap way of getting our storage, especially in our kitchen area, please let me know because that would be a big help. But if we have to, it shouldn't take too long to measure and cut a few boards to make some custom shelves if we need to. So that's our beautiful kitchen. So we do have... I know that those of you who know RVs know that they have this. We've got the nice seat cover. I'm in love with this faucet. Kind of silly to be in love with a faucet, but I really am. This is amazing to have this hose type faucet like this because our old camper just had a little tiny rinky dink plastic squeaky faucet that was not very nice. So this is amazing. And we have our entertainment center here. So something that this rig has that a lot of others don't is it does have the pantry here next to the entertainment center. So this is nice and close to the kitchen as opposed to having to walk back to the bunk room. So again, we don't have a whole lot in there. We want to do some more shelving. So this is not very deep. Um, you can see oh, my hand. So it's only, I don't know, six inches or so deep. It's not super duper deep, but we do still have the pantry that most RVs have in the back still, but it's in the bunk room and you'll see the difference. So this does have a nice pantry here, which I really love. Has some storage above and underneath. Of course, there's some rigs that instead of having the storage underneath there, they've got the fireplace, which living in North Carolina, uh, we don't really feel like we need the fireplace in there too much, but I love that like cozy feeling that that gives. So we have the master here, which is a pretty standard master bedroom. It's got the two wardrobes um, on either side of the bed, little nightstands kind of built in, and then the above storage. So in here, the kind of cool thing about having the RV that is brand new is we don't have to do a lot of work to it, but I am still going to do just some things just to make it home because it is, it's going to be our home. So our plan right now is to live in it for at least six months. Um, one big reason is to help pay it off because we want to try to have it paid off by the time my husband retires. Um, and also just to kind of minimize all of just life right now, <laughs> living in the RV is going to minimize that a lot because cleaning an entire, you know, 17 to 1800 square foot house takes a lot more time than cleaning a 300 some square foot RV. Um, and just, it allows us to, when we want to go somewhere, instead of having to pack and take all this time, our house will literally be on our wheels and ready to go. Um, so in here, all I want to do is put some pretty curtains up. I'm thinking about getting some shiplap contact paper to put behind there just to make it pretty because I like pretty things. If it's gonna be our home, I want it to be pretty. So that's the master. So the thing that this camper has that our last one did not is this, sorry, let me get this tilted right, amazing slide that has our couch and our dinette. Our last camper did not have a slide. It just had a dinette that would fold down into a bed just like this one does. But the space we had between the kitchen counter and the dinette was like one person's body width. And so it made it very difficult when we were trying to cook, the kids were playing, someone had to go to the bathroom, whatever. We had to go, all share that little space. So this feels ginormous <laughs> having all of this space between the kitchen and the slide there. Oh my goodness. This is like so much space that we feel like it is a mansion in here, which is really crazy. I'm sure to most people. So our couch is a standard um, jackknife couch. So it does just slide out to become a bed. It does have storage underneath. I don't know what we're going to put there yet. Maybe some shoes or something. So, boom, now it's a bed. Super easy. Even the kids have flipped it back. Um, I'm going to keep it as a bed now because it does require two hands. <laughs> I'm 
holding my phone with the other one. So it has the huge dinette. I know a lot of people don't like these big dinettes because they do take up so much room. But this one does have this easy storage underneath and that's something that we wanted with five people. We didn't want to have to fold up a bigger table to have more room, um, have chairs kind of sliding all over because we do plan to use this when we're traveling and we didn't want to have anything that's basically sliding around as far as chairs or tables or anything like that, which I'm sure there's a way to affix those to the floor as well if you need to. We just, we really enjoy having the big dinette. That's what we had in our last camper as well. And we, it doesn't bother us. Um, we don't mind the space that it takes up. And then again, it is another sleeping space. If we have anyone decide to come in our camper with us, that there is another sleeping space here that we can fold this all down and make it into another bed. So the thing with campers is they obviously are very small refrigerators. <laughs> so I'm really thankful that we have um, our outdoor kitchen where we're going to have a little bit more refrigerator space because with a six and a 10 year old, they're only going to start eating more and more. By the time we hit the road, they are going to be um, almost 10 and almost 14. So they're going to be big eaters. So I'm glad that we have an extra fridge for when we need it. I mean, even now to make sure we have enough room for milk and produce and stuff like that, it'll be really handy to have the extra fridge. Here's our bathroom. So the bathroom is really basic. You turn this way. So we've got our bathtub. I'm very glad we have an actual bathtub because we do have a little one, our little 15 month old. So I'm glad that she'll have the bathtub still. And then the shower. So very little, but it works. The only thing I want to replace is the water heater. <laughs> I want my long showers. So, but there's not a lot of storage in here. We've got the medicine cabinet here. We've got some more counter space over here. This is not staying. This is just what we had in our last rig because we had a humongous cabinet that ran right through here in our last one. And then we've got the storage down here and over there. And that's really it. So we do have a shower caddy thing that we're thinking about putting up here in the corner to hold some stuff. There's a lot of space here above the toilet. Here we put our new toilet in. So it's a standard regular size toilet. It's porcelain, beautiful. So we might put some shelves or something up here. We don't really know yet. Um, we needed to see, we don't want to put a whole bunch of holes in the walls and stuff like that yet. Especially we've heard about how warranties work with, um, with these camping warranties and whatnot, that if you make a lot of holes in the walls or any type of modification that that kind of makes your warranty void. So we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. Um, out here also, I'll be replacing all of the curtains. Just make it more homey. We're going to be probably covering the couch with at least a sheet so that we can wash it and whatnot because we have our dogs on our couches and whatnot. So, you know, just making it like home, putting curtains up just like we do military family move all the time. You always put up new curtains. That's the way it goes. So the bunk room is my absolute favorite. So this is the bunk room. This does not do it justice. I wish that I could do like a panoramic of this bunk room because this bunk room is actually really huge for not having slide in it. And this is what sold us on this camper all of the way was the bunk room. So first of all, we have the kids storage here. So this is their wardrobe, basically their big old closet. So there's a top and a bottom. So this is plenty of room for all three kids' clothes. And then something that this has, so this is typically in most rigs of size, this is the pantry and they normally keep it outside of the bunk room. So this is inside the bunk room. They've got their little door. This is inside the bunk room, not outside. And then typically they have a wardrobe on the back wall. So not only do we have this here for them because we have the pantry out in the living space, this is theirs now. This is no longer has to be the pantry. They also have this, which you typically have this in the back or something. And then this is all that they would have for storage. So we have both. So this is now going to be our new homeschool cabinet. And I am so pumped to be able to have all of this space just for our homeschool stuff. So there's three shelves there. We're able to fit a Rubbermaid, like the wide Rubbermaid bin up on top as well. So we have more storage and there's even more room on top. So I'm sure something will go up there as well. Um, so there's a ton of storage in here. And then, so this technically has four bunks. So the way that it works is there's one running this way, one running this way, and then the one underneath. So this is just kind of where I threw everything right now. So it wasn't all out in the middle of the floor because like I said, we don't have so homes for everything yet. So under here, so you see all these big cushions up here. 
These can be folded down into either a couch or a bed on the floor here, but this is going to be their homeschool space. So envision this with me, guys. This is the thing I'm most excited about doing. So we have our three Rubbermaid bins. This is where they're gonna have their toy storage. I'm gonna let um, each kid have their own toy bin so they can put whatever they want inside these bins for their toys. We're gonna put a piece of plywood on top of there and turn it into a desk and put pegboard on the back. I'm going to have um, all of their crayons and whatnot in little buckets hanging from the pegboard. I'm going to have um, like magazine rack type thing to put paper in, the construction paper, writing paper, whatever. Have that hanging back there on the pegboard. It is going to be basically an art homeschool area. <laughs> and I'm really excited about it because that's, that's the kind of kids that my kids are. They love creating, they love having artwork, they have crayons and colored pencils and markers and everything out all of the time in our house. So I wanted to be able to foster that creativity in the camper and have something that's not just gonna pour all over the place when we go to move. Because we can just pick up those buckets from the pegboard, shove them in a cabinet, and go on our merry way. Um, so I'm really excited. And then there's still, even when we have that, there is still, oh no, lighting, play with me there. Okay, there you go. There is still all of this floor space for them to play in here. So this, really, for not having a slide in here, this is the biggest bunk room I've ever seen as far as floor space goes. Because typically you have the two bunks on one side, the two bunks on another, a wardrobe in the back here, and then you only have a little tiny aisle of floor space in the bunk room. Where in here, there is so much floor space, even with us building a desk and everything. It's going to be huge back there. So, what else did I want to share with you guys? So, let me tell you a little bit about our plans. So, right now, we are planning on getting in this as soon as our house sells and closes and everything. Um, we have got a lot of work to do, which is as far as storage and me making curtains and doing my decorating things. That's what I like to do. Um, and just making sure we're making the space ours and that we're ready to sit in it. So, our plan right now is to go in it for at least six months. Um, here in Eastern North Carolina, everyone knows we had Hurricane Florence come through this past year. So there is virtually no houses on the market for rent. We're not planning on buying again. Um, my husband only has a couple years left in the military, so we don't want to buy again. We want to just go ahead and rent. Um, the military bases, the houses are on a freeze. They are not allowing anybody to move in. And then even so, we're like number 26 or something like that on the housing list. So even when they open up the freeze in four to six months, it could still be a good handful of months until we get into a house. Um, there are a few houses within our price range to rent, but it's literally a few, like two to three <laughs> the last time that I checked. And none of those are in the town that our base is going to be in. Those are about 30 to 40 minutes away from the base. So it would be a little bit of a commute for my husband. So we obviously have been open to living in an RV because that is our long-term plan. We have been thinking about buying one um, in the next year or so anyways because we did want to get one to pay off before he retired so that when we travel, we don't have that payment we're worried about. Um, but buying it now just made sense for us because we're obviously okay with living in an RV. So why not move into it now when there's a lack of housing? We are okay with it. And so our plan is to move in once the house closes. Um, we can go from this space to the next space because we're only moving about an hour and a half away. Um, and then, you know, just move whenever between the time that it takes to close and the time it is for him to move to the other base. And then we plan on kind of revisiting it in about six months and seeing where we are. So I am the one that's like, we're just moving in the RV and that's it. We're in it from now until forever. My husband's like, okay, let's not get burnt out because we don't want to basically overdo it. And then when it comes time to travel to not want to be in the RV anymore, we want to really be in love with traveling when we do it and to not be like sick of the space by then. So I don't know if that's going to happen though. We could totally love being in here. So we want to just revisit in six months and say, how happy is everybody? How unhappy is everybody? Do we want to continue living in this? We want to wait six more months. I mean, for all we know, in another year, we could get to a whole other duty station and have to move again. So we're like, maybe we'll wait until then and then move into a house for a couple years before he retires. So our full-time living plan right now is temporary. It is six months minimum. Um, and then we're going to revisit and see where we are. So, and I think that's really important to do, you know, to just kind of touch in and see 
who's happy, who's not. And then, cause you know, the option of living in a house is absolutely open for us. It's not something that we're saying we're never going to do ever again. Um, it is, you know, something that's totally still on the table, but this is probably the best situation for us right now, um, to be able to have this awesome RV for us to move into and to be our home and to just settle in while we're waiting for housing and all of that. So we're super pumped. We're really excited. If you guys have any questions, um, about our camper or about our road schooling, please let me know. Something I do want to point out is I always talk about us road schooling. Road schooling does not require you to live in an RV <laughs> or to even have an RV. Um, I know that I have, I can put a post for you guys in the comments about road schooling and just what it is, but it is totally just getting out there and learning about stuff in the real world. Some people call it road schooling. Some people call it world schooling. Some people call it life schooling, whatever it is, it's getting out there in the real world and learning about the things around you and learning about all of the options as far as the national parks and different museums and different nature trails to go on to and all of that, just getting out there and learning about the world around you. Um, and so this is the way that we've been able to do it is by having our RV. Um, but you can totally do it just locally. You don't have to travel to all of the different states to be able to road school. So it's attainable for everybody. Um, it's not something you can only do if you live in an RV. So I always like to point that out. And that is something that is on my mission is that all homeschoolers can be road schoolers in their own way. So always want to point that out and always want to go back to that because you have to just start where you are and you need to just be able to take your kiddos out and have those adventures whenever you can. So I will end my tour now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are super excited. I will do another one when we are all finished doing, putting all of our touches on everything. Um, so I will make sure to do a post as well with like before and after pictures and everything too. So I'm really excited to share that with you guys and I will see y'all next week. Have a good one.